All right, welcome, brilliant and beautiful people. Today, we're gonna dive into something a bit more comprehensive than usual. While most videos will only focus on the current 11-year solar cycle, I'm gonna go way beyond that. We're going to be talking about all of the solar cycles, big and small, known and theorized, and what it means when they peak together. This video will give you a fuller picture of our sun's impact on Earth and the entire solar system. But why now? Well, the current solar cycle is peaking, and that's a big deal, but to truly understand what this means, we need to look at the broader cosmic picture. We're going to explore not just the solar cycle, but the Hale cycle, the Gleisberg cycle, the Seuss cycle, and we're even going to touch on some of the hypothesized cycles. This is going to be one of the most comprehensive looks at the solar cycles you'll find, so buckle up. And by the way, check out this awesome sim in the background. I made this one myself, so watch all these Earths crash into Jupiters as we and to Jupiter as we go along. So, the solar cycle, or the sunspot cycle, lasts about every 11 years, and think of this as the sun's version of mood swings. Every 11 years or so, it swings from being relatively calm with few sunspots, the solar minimum, to being a fiery ball of chaos with tons of sunspots, the solar maximum. Currently, we are surfing the wave of solar cycle 25, which started in December of 2019. The sun's gearing up to hit its peak around the end of 2024 or the beginning of 2025. So get ready for some excitement. And then we have the hail cycle. Now the hail cycle lasts about every 22 years and every 22 years or so the sun will flip its magnetic poles. So imagine flipping your mattress for a better night's sleep, but with cosmic consequences. And right now we are mid cycle. We're heading for the next flip around 2030. It's like waiting for the climax in a thrilling series. And then we have the Gleisberg cycle. The Gleisberg cycle lasts about every 70 to 100 years. So picture the sun with a slow heartbeat. This cycle modulates the intensity of the 11 year solar cycles over a longer period. Right now we are cruising near a peak, meaning that the sun is in an energetic phase. It's like it had a double espresso. And then finally, we have the Seuss cycle, which lasts about every 200 to 210 years. Mm. This is like the sun's way of throwing a big party every couple of centuries. It influences long-term solar activity and has left its mark in tree rings and ice cores. We are approaching a peak here as well. So picture the sun gearing up for a bicentennial celebration. Historically, peaks in the Seuss cycle align with warmer periods, while minimums have linked to cooler times like the Little Ice Age. When the three cycles peak together, the sun cranks up the volume. So here's what this grand symphony means. Increased solar radiation. More intense solar radiation could lead to higher temperatures and more frequent solar storms. This affects Earth and our solar neighbors like Mars and Venus. Space weather. Enhanced solar activity means stronger solar wind and more geomagnetic storms. This could impact satellites, communication systems, and power grids on Earth. Climate implications. For Earth, this extra solar energy could add heat to our climate system. Think of it as an extra ingredient in the global warming recipe. On Mars, expect more dust storms and changes in its polar ice caps. The Martian weather could get pretty weird. Venus, which is already scorching, might see even more dramatic atmospheric changes. And stick around, because we're going to explore what could happen if all these cycles peaked at the same time. You're really not going to want to miss that part. And there are other theorized solar cycles that we don't know enough about yet, but scientists have theorized about longer solar cycles that could influence solar activities over millennia. While these cycles aren't as well understood, they add another layer to the sun's complex behavior. Imagine if these longer cycles coincided with the ones we've discussed. Things could get really interesting. Now really quickly, I just wanted to clear up a confusion between CMEs and sunspots, um, which I think are commonly mixed up with each other. So sunspots are the dark, cooler areas on the sun's surface caused by magnetic activity. Think of them as the sun's acne, indicating areas of intense magnetic activity. And the CMEs, or coronal mass ejections, these are the massive bursts of solar wind and magnetic fields that you see rising above the solar corona or being released in the outer space. 
So imagine a sun burping out a huge cloud of charged particles. That's a CME. Sunspots are indicators of solar activity and they often precede solar flares and CMEs. While sunspots themselves are relatively benign, the CMEs they can trigger are powerful and can affect space weather, including geomagnetic storms on Earth. And speaking of powerful solar events, what would happen if the sun's cycles all peak together? We're going to get that to that shortly. But first, if you're enjoying this journey through the sun's cycles, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow, and you'll get more comment from me right here in your feed. And let's look at this hypothetical scenario now. A maximum versus minimum forever. So if we're always at the maximum, the eternal fiesta, we would have a runaway greenhouse effect. And these are just educated guesses, but the Earth could face runaway global warming, melting polar ice caps, rising sea levels, and extreme heat waves could become the norm. We would also have enhanced volcanism, more than likely, which would lead to more eruptions and releasing additional greenhouse gases, which would also amplify warming. It would have an impact on the AMOC and ocean currents. So, you know, ocean currents like the AMOC could be disrupted. Climate patterns could shift, potentially cooling some regions despite the overall warming. And Martian and Venusian weather. Mars could become stormier with more polar ice sublimation, which is just the ice turning directly from a solid into a gas. And Venus might experience more intense atmospheric dynamics. If we were always at the minimums, uh, pretty much the opposite would occur. We would likely have a new ice age. Um, advancing glaciers, expanding sea ice, and harsher winters could dominate. We would likely have reduced volcanism. So less volcanic eruptions, which would cool global temperatures due to fuel, fewer greenhouse gas releases. The impacts on the AMOC and ocean currents, they would likely stabilize, mitigizing, mitigating some climate extremes but leading to overall cooling. And on Mars and Venus, Mars could see fewer dust storms and more stable polar ice caps, and Venus might cool slightly, though because of its thick atmosphere it would still remain scorching. And the Sun has had a very eventful past and a very exciting future. So in the past our Sun was likely more active in its youth, which would have helped to shape our early solar system. Think of it as the rebellious t teenage years, full of solar flares and intense radiation. In the future, the sun will gradually become more luminous over the next billion years or so, eventually expanding into a red giant and engulfing the inner planets. But don't worry, that's a long way off. It's like the sun's planning a grand retirement party, but it's still far away from packing up its office. Realistic implications and the current status. So real quick, uh, because we're doing a lot of hypotheticals here, so I do just want to ground ourselves in reality. So we are currently in solar cycle 25, which is nearing its peak around the end of 2024, beginning of 2025. The Hale cycle's next magnetic flip is around 2030, and the Gleisberg and Seuss cycles are nearing peaks, signaling heightened solar activity. So we're in a peak of three of them, um, and that doesn't include hypothesized, hypothesized ones we don't know about real-world implications. Solar radiation. Expect increased solar radiation contributing to warmer temperatures, more frequent solar storms that could impact our technology out in space, such as satellites, and climate dynamics. Human-driven climate change is the primary driver, but understanding solar cycles adds a lot of depth to our knowledge. So, connecting the dots. I'm not questioning global warming here, but rather just adding depth to the puzzle. These solar cycles coincidence could be a crucial piece in understanding climate dynamics. It's about seeing how all factors, including these solar cycles, interplay. And I've teased this for you the whole video, so finally, let's get wild. So before we go, let's get a little crazy with a crazy hypothetical. So imagine if the sun was peaking not only in all the known solar cycles, like the solar, Hale, Gleisberg, and Seuss cycles, but also in some hypothetical, super powerful, longer cycles. The sun would be like a cosmic DJ, cranking the volume up to 11 and breaking a dial. What could happen? Well, an absolute guess here, we'd likely have extreme solar radiation. So the Earth could be bombarded with so much solar radiation that our atmosphere starts to thin out, similar to what happened to Mars. 
Imagine walking outside and getting sunburn in seconds. Or worse, no atmosphere at all. Runaway greenhouse effect on steroids. Again, just an absolute guess, but temperatures could skyrocket beyond anything we've seen. Potentially boiling oceans, turning the Earth into a pressure-cooked Venus. Life as we know it could be on the brink of extinction, with only the toughest extremophiles surviving. Mega solar storms. Again, just an absolute guess, but massive solar storms could wipe out electrical grids, fry satellites, make space travel a no-go. The northern lights might be seen as far south as the equator at this time, but we'd be too busy dealing with the apocalypse to enjoy them. So, I'm taking a fun whirlwind tour through the sun's cycles, the cosmic coincidences, and what they could mean for Earth and beyond. The sun cycles are just like notes in a cosmic symphony, sometimes harmonizing, sometimes clashing, but always influencing the grand cosmic dance. If you've enjoyed this deep dive, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Check out the links on the screen to continue your journey. Uh, make sure to check the description for all of the references. And I hope you learned a lot today and have a wonderful and great day. Thank you.